Amiibo! Amiibo wing. Amiibology. The study of Amiibo. It's first grade, SpongeBob. It's kind of funny. I never intended to get into these little guys. I actually left GameStop with my copy of Smash Wii U without buying a single one. Slowly though, the appeal of having my own little Smash trophy collection, like in the games, became too much for my collector's brain and well, now I own every single Amiibo minus the Monster Hunter and Dark Souls ones. I have spent more money on these things than truly I care to share. From Mario to Zelda to Kirby, Splatoon and even Metroid, there have been a ton of these things produced. No series more massive though than the Super Smash Bros. series of Amiibo. Now they made one for every single fighter in Smash Ultimate, which is give or take around 90 with the Player 2 Amiibo. Now these were honestly super fun to collect, and they really gave collectors something to look forward to with each wave that would launch. The problem was these were really hard to come by at times. Many of these Amiibos were produced in really low quantities, and so the scalpers were doing the devil's work, scooping these things up, and then selling them at really high prices on eBay. Can I be honest though? The toxic part of me really liked the thrill and the challenge of hunting these things down. And so they were really satisfying to collect for a while. I have some really fond memories of lining up at 5 a.m. with my friend Dennis outside of Toys R Us trying to grab a Mega Yarn Yoshi or just trying to get the complete Wave 4 set of Smash Amiibo. All of the newer Amiibo though have launched with pretty sufficient stock, so these have become significantly less challenging to get, which really is the way it should be. With that said though, there are a ton of these things to look at. With the set recently being completed with Sora, I figured this would be a fun video to go ahead, look at all the Smash Amiibo and rank them from my least favorite all the way down to my absolute favorite, the best of the best. Now this turned out to be so much harder than I anticipated. Please keep in mind, this is just my list. So I'm ranking these based on number one, how much I love the character, and number two, how well crafted their Amiibo looks. Now if this list was ranked only based on how the figures looked, this would probably be a pretty boring video. All of the Smash Ultimate Amiibo would be ranked the very best, and all of the first prints would be at the very bottom. So this is my completely biased top 90 or so Super Smash Bros. series Amiibo. Now please keep in mind, this collection is like my pride and joy. I do love all of these, so if my least favorite is your favorite, don't take it personally. Someone had to be at the bottom. So without any further ado, let's go! At the very bottom of the barrel of the Super Smash Bros. Amiibo, we have Lucario. I remember this guy being exclusive to Toys R Us upon release, and I honestly have felt so underwhelmed by him ever since. Sure, Lucario is a cool enough Pokemon, but at least in my opinion, literally every single other Super Smash Bros. Amiibo completely outclasses him. There's not anything blatantly wrong per se, but there's some uncanny valley going on, and this figure just screams McDonald's toy to me. For me, Alex suffers from an overly simple design that just looks out of place with the rest of the cast. Add in the fact that she does not share the recognizability of Steve, and you have an amiibo that was gotten solely for the sake of completing the collection. She is extremely faithful to her original character design though. Not surprisingly, I have Steve ranked just above Alex. I do tend to like his eye-catching blue shirt just a bit more, plus he's reached gaming legend status as the face of Minecraft. Unfortunately for Steve though, Minecraft just really isn't my thing. Still, it does feel pretty fitting to have the character behind the best-selling video game of all time be included with the rest of gaming's all-stars. I do think it would have been neat to make this set a 3-pack with an Enderman amiibo, even if it would have wound up at the bottom of this list too. Mr. Solid Snake is next up on our list. I always believed Snake to be a really odd choice for Smash Bros. character, though he does come from a renowned series. As a later figure in the series, his amiibo is really well sculpted and has a ton of impressive detail. So why is he this low on the list? Personally, he's just not my favorite to play as in Smash, and so I don't have a huge connection to the character or his amiibo figure. Put you back in your box there, buddy. Bayonetta is similar to Snake in that I don't dislike her or her series. My beef with Bayonetta began when she was declared the winner of the Smash ballot. To me, it just felt so anticlimactic. She then went on to be the most overpowered and broken character in Smash, which further fueled my distaste for her. Amiibo-wise though, she looks great. Her blue guns and feathers are really visually distinct, and she has one of the better faces in this Amiibo line. I do personally prefer her Player 2 figure though. I think the ornate details of her jumpsuit are really showcased well on this one, and I just prefer the over-the-top, dramatic, long-haired version of Bayonetta. This isn't a witch hunt. Detail-wise, she looks really impressive, but this Umbra Witch just hasn't sunk her hooks into me. Wii Fit Trainer was dubbed one of the esteemed Holy Trinity. Along with both Villager and Marth, 
three amiibo from the original wave that were incredibly hard to come by for several months after release. Funnily enough though, this is the only one out of those three that I was able to get my hands on at launch. I do love this character. She was my main for all of Super Smash Bros for the Wii U and 3DS, but her simple design just doesn't make for the most striking amiibo. I'll always salute the sun with my main girl though. Fire Emblem's Hero King is next up on our list. The second of the Holy Trinity amiibo, Marth was known for having an especially derpy expression. It's important to note that my Marth figure is a reprint, so his face is a little bit improved. His colors are pretty regal, and his paint job is also pretty solid, but he still does have that questionable face and a bit of a saggy sword going on there. As an early amiibo, it's understandable that he's not up to the quality standards that the Smash Ultimate amiibo have set, so he's lovingly earned the name Murphy in my collection. Zero Suit Samus is another whom I don't have a ton of connection with. I much prefer playing as the other Metroid characters. There's some pretty nice details on this amiibo though. They used a really neat metallic blue paint for her bodysuit and it contrasts really nicely with her bright yellow ponytail and those highlighter yellow accents on her wrists and boots too. I do appreciate that her support stand isn't overly obvious and there's some really nice assets about this figure. Little Mac. Punch-Out's protagonist was probably one of the most suitable newcomers to the series and one I enjoy playing on occasion. For an earlier figure, I do find his bicep and quad muscles pretty well sculpted. I think the paint job and shading work on his green boxing gloves and his trunks looks especially nice. One issue with this figure is that he appears extremely hunched over due to the uppercut that he's throwing, and I wish he was just a little bit more upright so you could admire his detail a bit more. Terry Bogard's amiibo looks fantastic. The face of the Fatal Fury series has made his way into Smash's Fighter Pass 2, and unfortunately, I've never played a Fatal Fury title, so his reveal and inclusion didn't do very much for me. But his level of detail, especially for a figure of this size, is phenomenal. Take the impressive sculpt of Little Mac's physique and make it even better. Add to that some really great detail and colors on his clothing, and you have a pretty excellent amiibo. Take like every word I just said about Terry's amiibo and apply it here. This time, just with Tekken. Great detail? Check. Nice color and texture work on the pants? Check. Jimmy Neutron hair? Check. Great figure, but one that I don't personally have much love for. Pokemon Trainer is honestly one of my favorite characters in Smash. But let's be honest, it's most memorable because Squirtle, Charizard, and Ivysaur completely steal the show. Still, I'm pretty happy that we did get a figure of Red, as he is the titular Pokemon trainer. He looks incredible too. All the details are on point. His Pokeball has a nice glossy finish, and he has some great denim texturing on his jeans there. The yellow pack does add some nice contrast too. The Legend of Zelda is one of my absolute all-time favorite series, so it does pain me to put Zelda this low on the list. Plus, I really enjoy her character moveset in Smash. To me, her amiibo just isn't the best quality-wise. Her face is just okay in my opinion, and I find it kinda odd that her hair has like next to no detail sculpt-wise on top. For an earlier one though, her dress looks great and there is some pretty fine detail work there. I just vastly prefer her Smash Ultimate design based off a link to the past. Next up, we have THE Street Fighter, Ryu, and he looks great. Again, I'm not really a fan of these types of fighting games, but I can't deny his status as a gaming and cultural pantheon. I think he is one of the better sculpts of the line, and the faithfulness to the character is awesome. The drawback is, unfortunately, I don't have that much of an emotional attachment to Ryu. This figure looks especially good when paired with the next amiibo on our list, though. I remember feeling really disappointed when Ken was shown to be one of the final two characters for the base game of Smash Ultimate. Because again, I know he's an icon, but I don't really personally care for Street Fighter. But out of Ryu and Ken, I prefer Ken. I think his fire powers are really cool, and as for the amiibo, he's another with an incredible amount of detail. I think I just prefer the bright red outfit and the blonde hair contrast color-wise. It does make for a really nice looking figure. Next up, we have Fire Emblem Path of Radiance's hero, Ike. This powerhouse is actually really fun to play as in-game. His amiibo is relatively faithful and boasts a ton of great detail. I really appreciate how his golden sword, Ragnall, looks kind of weathered and damaged. The same can probably be said about his face, too. Now, I'm not sure if it's just mine, but something is not right with that face. It just looks a little too similar to Quasimodo. From the right distance, though, 
He's looking radiant. Robin from Fire Emblem Awakening was probably one of my new favorite characters in Smash 4. It was pretty neat to see Smash truly take on a mage-like character with a variety of spells at his disposal. Overall, the amiibo looks pretty good. The details of the Levin Sword and his royal black and gold robes look great. I do think the reprints of this amiibo do look a little bit better, but I'm still pretty happy with the original print. This guy was pretty rare for a time. I remember the Toys R Us that I bought this guy at only received 10 or so at launch. Number 71, we have Dracula's worst nightmare, Simon Belmont. Castlevania is one of those series I've always meant to get around to playing, but somehow, life has always gotten in the way of me doing so. In amiibo form though, he is equipped with his Morningstar whip and he just looks fantastic. The various tones of brown on his tunic really take you back to that NES style artwork, and as a Smash Ultimate amiibo, the detail here is just impeccable. Just edging out Simon is his descendant, Richter. Typically when I play as one of those two in Smash, I tend to use Richter, so he's ranked a tad higher here. As expected with these later amiibo, this guy looks great. His blue tunic really grabs your eye, and the additional detail on his boots and dagger are just super impressive. The Monado boy from Xenoblade Chronicles is up next. Upon release, he was exclusive to GameStop, which made him a bit tougher to acquire. As a toy of this size, his detail is really good. I like how the hints of purple on his clothing really accent his kind of rust-colored legwear. They really needed to nail the Monado on this one, which does steal the show, and luckily they did. Here's another example of the support stand done well. This Gen 6 frog Pokemon really makes a nice looking amiibo. Greninja was a Toys R Us exclusive upon release as well. I absolutely love the color scheme on this guy. His bright pink scarf-like tongue is a big reason for that. It just goes so well with the various shades of blue found on this figure. The sculpt is really faithful to his original design too. I just don't typically play as Greninja in-game at all though. Plus, I was a chess pin guy, so Greninja, I don't choose you. Next up, we have the Princess of Hyrule's alter ego, Sheik. In amiibo form, Sheik looks pretty darn good. The colors here are on point, and the red Sheik emblem is vibrant and cleanly painted on her torso. As with the others, there's some great texture work, and this one bears a great resemblance to her character art. The dagger on the back was a neat touch too. Honestly, I just really prefer many of the other amiibo in this set. The Princess of the Mushroom Kingdom is next up on our list. This one gets me pretty nostalgic. I vividly remember purchasing Peach as part of the original wave of amiibo figures, and she's one of the better looking ones of that first wave too. Her rosy pink dress is iconic, and there's some neat gold trimming there as well. Her face doesn't quite scream Peach to me, but that could just be because Nintendo absolutely nailed her design in the later Super Mario Bros. Amiibo series. Mii Fighters are at this point in the list solely for the novelty of having a figural representation of Mii's. If only Matt was the brawler. Honestly though, these three look super cool together and those default faces really harken back to the simpler times of the Wii and spending hours making celebrity or hamburger Mii's. They all have relatively simple designs, though they all hit those three primary colors, and as a trio, truly look pretty awesome. Pitt's Doppelganger was launched alongside Palutena and was initially a Best Buy exclusive. Dark Pit is by no means a bad amiibo figure. The rich black and gold paint does look pretty cool, and overall looks very faithful for the brooding character, but I think the super static pose just doesn't do much to help this one stand out among the rest. He also just feels really small when I compare him to the regular Pit amiibo. Pichu wins the award for probably the cutest amiibo in the set. I love how their color is just a bit more of that almost neon yellow when compared to Pikachu. I always thought Pichu was an odd choice for an additional character, but I can't lie, this thing is absolutely freaking adorable. You know, for one of the first amiibo produced, Hyrule's hero has some really great detail. All of the designs on his shield and Master Sword are here and well painted too. I always struggle to see his face just due to the angle, but his green tunic and sheath look awesome as well. This thing unfortunately loses a lot of style points for having a really unsightly yellow support stand. The yellow is just really bizarre. I'm not sure why they wouldn't opt for a clear plastic instead of crystallized PP in this case. Oh, okay, got it. Well said, Amiibo Link. If Pichu won the award for the cutest amiibo, Kirby might just be the runner-up. The pink puffs smash amiibo awaits battle by just sitting, adorably. 
possibly thinking about his next meal. The paint job and overall sculpt on this one is really solid, though there is a really visible production seam on his rump that reminds me a lot of Mr. Potato Head. I also think the pose is a little plain for the Super Smash Bros series, but how can you not love Kirby? Donkey Kong's Primate Pal with a peanut pop gun is next up on our list. I actually really like this one. I'm a big fan of Diddy Kong both in Smash Bros and outside of it. Fun fact, Diddy Kong Racing is like one of my top 5 favorite games ever, but I digress. Diddy has a neat dynamic pose and is really well sculpted with a ton of furry detail and a great paint job. The little stars on his tank and the Nintendo logo on his cap are great touches. I'm not sure if this is everyone's Diddy, but I'm not sure at whom or where he's looking but the eyes are just a little fishy on this guy. As with Link, I'm not sure about that yellow support stand. Along with Ken, I met Incineroar with a super lukewarm reaction when he was first announced. I think I just felt some Pokemon fatigue at the time. But since then, this guy has actually really grown on me and his amiibo is no different. The ferocious feline has a ton of great detail. All the tufts of hair are nicely sculpted and his fiery belt is super eye-catching and just looks great with that rich red fur color. Overall, it's a great representation of the character and looks very nice alongside the other Pokemon in the set. Lucina is an amiibo I felt really proud to have for a while. Similar to Robin, this one was pretty hard to come by for a while after release. I think the detail on her is great. I've always especially really liked the detail on her boots and tunic, though I've always kind of wished her amiibo had that iconic butterfly mask from Awakening. The falchion and cape looks especially great here, and she certainly has a much better face than Murphy does. Similarly to Lucina, Crumb is another great looking Fire Emblem amiibo, adorned in a rich blue paint with great tunic and boot detailing. The tattered cape is a really nice dynamic detail, and honestly, this guy just looks fantastic. For being one of the middle releases of the Smash line, Ganondorf comes packed with a lot of intricate sculpt and paint details. Being based off the Twilight Princess version of Ganondorf, he bears that glowing scar on his chest which I genuinely never noticed until recently. The Gerudo armor and designs all look great and there's a fair amount of texture work on him as well. The Demon King has one of the better faces out of the earlier releases in my opinion too, and overall, he's one of Hyrule's best in this line. King Koopa is one I've always felt a little mixed on. On the one hand, it's Bowser, what's not to like? On the other, I think his Smash model's face looks a tad off or something. I can't really describe it. Either way, that's more of a problem with the design and not necessarily the amiibo. Early on, he was one of my absolute favorites. For one, he's a bulkier Smash amiibo, so his figure is super dense and it just feels a little bit more substantial in your hands, which is neat. He also has some really flashy, contrasting colors that really catch your eye and look fantastic with the other Mario figures in this series. He has a ton of scaly details too, and some great ridges on that shell. Like Kirby, Yoshi is another one with a very simple sculpt that just looks fantastic. There's really not much opportunity for a ton of intricate sculpting or texture work, but his cute design just looks wonderful when realized as an amiibo. I love the bright green on him. Not much to say about Yoshi, he's just an adorable little guy, and I love him. For being a Wave 1 release, I'm still very impressed by DK. He's incredibly faithful to his render and has some fantastic hairy detail. He's in a pretty neat looking pose which required a support stand, which is semi-clear plastic, so it's not offensive to me here. Although it did strike me when I was making this video that it kinda looks like he's sitting on the toilet and I can't unsee that now. Anyway, his paint job is super solid and the DK logo on his tie is nice and sharp. I still go bananas for this guy. Mega Man was one of the characters I was most excited about being added into Smash 4, and he's certainly one of the most deserving. I think the Smash team absolutely did him justice. His new design looks great, albeit almost a little bit chibi, but this really works for Mega Man. The figure inspired by his new look is equally as great. The metallic blue paint on his helmet, blaster, and boots looks absolutely awesome, and it ties in nicely with the other shades of blue here. With no noticeable seams or support stand, this figure looks lovely and absolutely blasts away the competition. Byleth is one of the cooler Fire Emblem amiibo. I'm not sure if it's because I absolutely adored Three Houses, but I just think this one rocks. I actually play as Byleth a fair bit though. I think using the three legendary weapons is really unique and he just has a ton of neat tools at his disposal. On this amiibo, the flaming sword of the creator looks really cool. I'm always a sucker for a legendary weapon with a cool elemental effect. Detail-wise, as a Smash Ultimate amiibo, this guy looks incredible. 
I know I'm a glutton, but getting a female player 2 Byleth would have been a really neat addition. Kid Icarus's hero looks really great in amiibo form. I think I prefer the more holy angelic look for Pit, but of course the fallen angel aesthetic slash shadow the hedgehog thing that Dark Pit has going on is sick. Pit has a ton of great detail. His wings look nice and fluffy, the bow has a surprising amount of detail, and the gauntlets look great. Decent face too, especially for the earlier amiibo standards. Now because of his pose, it does have another one of those dreaded support stands, which is colored blue on this one. I'd still prefer if it were clear, but I'm definitely not as mad about the blue, considering Pit flies and soars through the skies, so it kind of works. From Metroid fame, the Samus Smash Amiibo looks awesome. For being from Wave 1, they really captured a fair amount of impressive detail, and the various metallic paints used here really make her a standout figure. I always prefer dynamic poses for these, but I will say, Samus walking forward with her cannon by her hip looks insanely badass. You can almost imagine it being in slow motion. Wouldn't her charge shot have been a neat particle effect for this? Charizard is one of my favorite Pokemon. Basic? Maybe a little. He also hits like a truck and is just super fun to play as. In amiibo form, Charizard looks awesome. I have fond memories of getting this one as well. He was part of a really strong amiibo wave 4. The colors on Charizard are absolutely perfect. I love the translucent fire tail. Not a ton to say, honestly, just an overall great looking amiibo. All the way from the ARMS Grand Prix, Min Min was honestly one of my favorite characters from that game's base roster. Between having her ramen noodle arms and her sick dragon laser, she was easily one of my favorites. Of course, I now believe in Lola Pop supremacy from that game's later DLC. Anyway, a fighter from ARMS in Super Smash Bros. is super neat. Min Min was an awesome choice and her amiibo totally reflects that. All the details are absolutely spot on. It feels super cool to have a figural representation of some of these arms. Her face is great and the scaly metallic green paint job on the dragon arm just looks incredible. I really like how they even incorporated a little dashing air particle effect on her base. I know the internet has kind of soured on it since, but Fire Emblem Fates is one of my most played Fire Emblem titles, so I have really fond memories of my playthroughs as Corrin. I know many of us got Fire Emblem fatigue when we'd see a new character revealed, but honestly, as a dragon, Corrin has a pretty sweet moveset and is just a really neat character. This one is a pretty solid sculpt, although they have a relatively simple outfit with minimal colors. The real star of the show is that Yato sword, brimming with all the dragon flames. It just looks so cool. I love that Corrin got a player 2 amiibo also, with the female Corrin being my preferred of these two. She was also pretty rare for quite a while, so I'm sure that those that missed out at launch had to pay a pretty penny for this one. Jigglypuff, oddly, is one I just really love from this line. Maybe it's because she makes me nostalgic for the original Super Smash Bros. Maybe it's because she just has the right shade of pink. Whatever the reason, her amiibo is absolutely adorable. There's really not a ton they could have improved on. Jigglypuff has such a simple design as it is, and it was just done super well here. She was also one of the chosen ones to be a store exclusive, launching as a target-only amiibo. As with Kirby, I kind of wish the seam wasn't as noticeable as it is, but I'll sing this amiibo's praises any day. Luigi in Smash Amiibo form looks awesome. This is the only one of the Mario series Smash Amiibo that I actually prefer the Smash counterpart to. This one just looks perfect. They absolutely nailed his sculpt and colors, and they have him in that incredibly goofy Smash Bros pose. I do wish he were set some other way because the translucent plastic being so front and center is a little distracting, but he still does look great. Fun fact, he was my main in the original Smash 64. I just love that his overalls were purple for some reason. Mr. Star Fox is one of those characters who is almost as synonymous with Smash Bros as he is with his own series. He looks truly great as an amiibo figure too. For a Wave 1 toy, they nailed all of the details on this. He's got all of the sculpted tufts of hair, proportions look great, and all of the texture and detail work on his outfit and accessories look great too. His pose looks like he's doing his fox illusion move and it just totally works. What doesn't though are those randomly dark blue plastic supports. Really odd color choices on the earlier amiibo. Take all of the positives of the fox amiibo and apply them to Falco here. I just like him a little bit more than Fox. These two look especially great together because you can kind of do that back-to-back -back thing with them, which just looks really neat. I love how they even captured the tiny Star Fox team logos on his jacket, and the paint job around his eye looks especially nice. 
Okay, let's be real. They honestly did not have to give us a plethora of poses for the Mr. Game & Watch amiibo. He's a flat 2D sprite, so really, how much detail can there be? I guess to make up for that, they included a base with an interchangeable figure. One standard pose, one performing the bell ringing taunt, another with the parachute, and finally with the nine hammer. This figure ranks pretty high just for the versatility alone. Super, super cool. The guy they told you could never make it into Smash Bros, Ridley from Metroid. This guy was an incredible start to the Smash Ultimate hype cycle. What a reveal he was. As you'd imagine, Ridley is an absolute powerhouse, and his amiibo reflects that too. He's one of the larger ones, and he just looks imposing as hell. As always, the colors and sculpt are absolutely on point. Similar to Min Min, they added a little particle effect at his base, which really adds a sense of weight to him. After Mario came out in possibly my favorite amiibo wave. Similar to Jigglypuff, this guy was a Target exclusive upon release. I've always been really partial to Dr. Mario. I've never played much of his own games, but in Smash, I just love his theme and his additional power a little bit more than regular Mario. I always feel kind of drawn to this amiibo. That simple white lab coat with the glossy red and blue pill makes for a really striking figure. Dr. Mario's amiibo was one case where the novelty of owning him felt especially cool. Like, are there any more figural representations of Dr. Mario? I can't even lie, Toon Link was one of my absolute favorite characters in Brawl. Wind Waker is also somewhere within my top favorite Zelda games, so I have a lot of love for this design. This amiibo figure is 100% faithful to the render as well. All of the color and shading work with this paint job are absolutely impeccable. The various greens are really saturated and nice. I even like how they added a subtle blue gradient to the top of his eyes for extra dimension. I believe this was before the Wind Waker Nendroid released, so again, it felt super cool to have a figure with the Wind Waker's version of the Master Sword and Hero Shield. I've always loved Mewtwo, and in Super Smash Bros, he's still one of my favorites to play. He's just got that brooding, dark, and villainous vibe about him which has always resonated with me. His pose is pretty standard, but it's Mewtwo. No matter what this guy does, he just exudes cool. As far as sculpts go, this guy looks practically perfect. There's just a noticeable production seam on his leg, but other than that though, this is undeniably Mewtwo. Speaking of villains, up next we have Dark Samus. If I didn't make it clear with Mewtwo, I usually take a liking to these dark, kinda edgy characters. Dark Samus is no exception. This twisted alien replica of Samus is really cool. In Smash Ultimate, I prefer Dark Samus to actual Samus. I think the overall color scheme is awesome, I really love all of the black tendril-like textures all over this one, and that threatening blue glowing through just looks great. Rob was included in a retro 3-pack with both Mr. Game & Watch and Duck Hunt, which made for a really amazing retro set. I honestly love this one, it truly looks like a mini scaled down version of Rob the Robot. They even used a different shiny plastic for the lenses over his eyes, and they captured that little indicator light on his head which really lends itself to the realism of this guy. That said, I do vastly prefer the Japanese Rob with his Famicom inspired color scheme. I just think the contrast of the cream and burgundy is so iconic. Seeing Marth and Roy unlock in Smash Bros. Melee was my first exposure to the Fire Emblem series, like many. Since Melee though, Roy has become less of a clone of Marth and more into his own fighter. This one launched alongside Ryu, and I remember being super pumped to get Roy. I mean, this figure is amazing. The details on his armor and sword look incredible, and the royal blues and gold contrast really well with his fiery red hair. The stoic pose with his cape and headband flowing by ties everything together and makes for the highest ranked Fire Emblem amiibo on this list. I was a massive Splatoon fan when it first launched. Though my playtime did dwindle a bit with 2 and 3, I was overjoyed to see the Inkling make it into Smash Ultimate. This one kind of steals the show with its vibrant colors. From those hot pink sneakers to the fluorescent greens of her splatter shot, every detail is perfect here. The acrylic for the ink tank and the glossy paint used on the tentacle hair look awesome. It almost looks ripped straight from the game. This one absolutely splats the competition. Villager is the final amiibo from the Holy Trinity. The Villager's inclusion in Smash is another I was really excited for, and the super simple, generic Villager's design translates super well into amiibo form. 
Important to note that I have a reprint, though there is a sweet charm to the first print with its oversized eyes. This one doesn't have a ton of intricate designs or detail, but I have really fond memories of hunting for this one, so it's up there on my list. Isabel is perhaps the cutest amiibo out of this entire set. I mean, look at her! I think it's really funny that this adorable little dog can beat the shit out of immense evil like Sephiroth and Ridley. As with all things Isabel, this thing is just absolutely too cute for words. It would have been neat if her bell was real, but I know that they did that on the Nendroid figure. Her colors and sculpt are perfect, and she is right at home next to the villager in this set. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is another one of those games I just simply haven't gotten around to playing. Though I know Pyra and Mithra are by far the most iconic characters to come out of that game. Them making it into Smash is a no-brainer, and they're super fun to play as. Looking at these reminds you of how far they've come with upping the quality of these figures. For a toy of this size, the details are just incredible. Look at all the texture work and sharp paint jobs on their outfits. They look especially great back to back, as was intended. I think I do prefer Pyra, but these two make a fantastic duo. One of the most recognizable mascots of all time, Pikachu. I don't have a ton to say about this one, I just really love this amiibo. There's just a timelessness with Pikachu's design, but when I look at this figure, it brings me right back to the N64 days. The eye-catching yellow and bright red cheeks on this one are adorable, and overall, just another really well-crafted amiibo. I certainly choose you, Pikachu. I'm still super impressed by Daisy Smash Amiibo. The amount of detail on her is just insane. They even clearly captured her daisy-shaped earrings and her brooch. I love all of the additional orange lace and intricate frills they added to her dress. I'm not even a massive fan of Daisy, but this figure is just so well made that it remains one of my absolute favorite Smash Amiibo. The One-Winged Angel from Final Fantasy VII is next on our list. Still one of the biggest surprises in terms of Smash character reveals for me. This guy is incredibly well crafted. All of the proportions are perfect, and look at all of the wrinkles and texture work along that clothing. His incredibly lengthy Masamune sword is perfectly captured, and of course, the Dark Angel Wing puts Dark Pits to shame. This guy looks absolutely menacing and like he was ripped straight out of the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Really awesome amiibo. Fittingly, up next we have Cloud Strife. I remember what a truly insane reveal he had as well. I know he's almost the mascot of the Final Fantasy series, but it still was such a shock when he was revealed. Now, Cloud doesn't have the most involved clothing or amiibo, but they absolutely nailed all of the details both on him and his Buster Sword. He just looks perfect. I personally really like the screw detail on his pauldron, and the indigo color of his uniform really brings you back to the PS1 era. Super well done. Add in the fact he's in that absolutely iconic pose, and this is one of the most clearly recognizable amiibo in this set. Cloud also has a Player 2 variant from Advent Children. I initially liked this version better because it reminded me of Cloud's appearance in Kingdom Hearts 2. Because who doesn't look badass in a blacked out fit? I do like the more nonchalant pose of this guy too. I'm about to totally expose myself and lose any gamer cred that I might have, but I'm hoping to play the original Final Fantasy VII for the first time sometime soon. Coming for you, Cloud. Captain Falcon races his way onto our list. Now, even more than Star Fox, there is no character more synonymous with Super Smash Bros. than Captain Falcon. If his name is mentioned, I genuinely think more people would immediately think of his Falcon Punch versus anything F-Zero related. They did this guy so much justice. From the holster on his hip to the Falcon on his helmet, he's got a ton of impressive detailing all over. Most importantly though, they perfectly sculpted the face. This is undeniably Captain Falcon. I've said it for a few others, but this one, most of all, really brings me back to that simpler time when Smash 64 was the only place to show him your moves. Show me a move! I'm especially nostalgic for this one because this was the very first amiibo that I ever owned. I know there's been a thousand different figures of Mario, but this one is really iconic in its own right. I love that they included the fireball from his render. And for being the very first, there's a fair amount of denim detailing on his overalls. I do like how they kind of gave the indication of light brimming from his fireball with the highlights painted there too. It's Mario. What more can be said? 
have such a deep love for this character, and his moveset is such a love letter to all of those retro NES games. Now, Duck Hunt was my main alongside Wii Fit trainer for all of Smash 4, so this guy holds a really special place in my heart. On top of that, this snarky dog is just absolutely adorable, and so is the duck. Look at those little paw pads. I love that for a while, they were my fill-in for Banjo-Kazooie, being a duo character with a bird sidekick. They have a simple design, but the paint job is totally solid, and they capture the mischievous likeness of both of these characters perfectly. The boy from Earthbound fame is next on our list. Ness initially launched as a GameStop exclusive amiibo, and this guy was a challenge to acquire. I remember being in store trying to pre-order this one, and GameStop's entire system went down due to so many people trying to do the same thing. It was a stressful time to be an amiibo collector. Nonetheless, Ness looks amazing. It could be all of the primary colors, but he's one that just absolutely catches your eye. He's another with a really simple design, but there is some nice stitching along his shorts, and that backpack looks great, even if it's rarely seen. Earthbound is really high on my must-play backlog. Better save a few thousand if I ever want to play that on Super Nintendo. Similarly, Lucas from Mother 3 looks just as great, and because of their almost mirroring poses, they look truly awesome when put side to side. Lucas is my preferred of the two. I just think his moveset feels a little bit beefier, and his smash attacks are much more satisfying to pull off. I do think it would have been neat to have like a PK particle effect, or even his rope snake incorporated into his amiibo. The Luminary from Dragon Quest XI was such an amazing inclusion to the game. I absolutely adored Dragon Quest XI. It's my favorite in the series, and one of my favorite Switch games too, actually. This guy boasts a ton of impressive detail. From that stunning and legendary shield, to the golden sword of light, and all of the wonderful and varied texture work on the hero's outfit, it's an insanely impressive figure, especially at this scale. Again, I know I'm a total amiibo glutton, because I was really hoping to get a multi-pack containing amiibo of the previous heroes too, especially the one from Dragon Quest VIII. We all know it, Meta Knight is the coolest. I absolutely love this guy. He initially launched as a Best Buy exclusive, though I don't think he was exceedingly rare. I especially love how they did the mask on this one. The shading just truly makes it look like it's a battle-worn metal. With his impressive wings and his golden Galaxia sword, Meta Knight is absolutely spot on. Bowser Jr. was one of the amiibo I was truly most excited to get. I mean, there's not many ways that you can own the Koopa Clown car physically. On top of that, he looks perfect. I love how they used a kind of pearlescent white for the clown car, and it does kind of steal the show considering that's where 90% of Junior's attacks come from. As for Bowser Jr. himself, his face is adorable and perfectly faithful to the character. From his bib to the ridges on his shell, Bowser Jr. rides as one of the very best in this set. Captain Olimar looks flat out amazing. I'm a huge fan of the Pikmin series, though I don't care for much how he plays in Super Smash Bros. Detail-wise, this figure always was one of the best in my opinion. From Captain Olimar's impressively crafted helmet and antenna, to the three faithful Pikmin at his side, there is not a single thing I'd change about this one. All of the colors and details are absolutely spot on, and I just couldn't have picked a better pose for this figure. This guy truly looks like he was plucked right from Pikmin. Let it be known that I am a huge Sonic fan. What a dream come true it was to finally get this guy in Smash Bros. Brawl. Unfortunately, I just don't enjoy playing as Sonic in Smash, but I couldn't be happier that he's a part of the cast. Similarly to Mario, there's been a million and one different toys and statues based on the blue blur, but I've always been a little partial to his amiibo. There's nothing overly impressive about it, but as with most merchandise based on him, it just truly captures that 90s attitude and confidence that Sonic has about him. Add in a perfect paint job between him and his trusty shoes, and you have a way past cool amiibo. What's the matter, scared? Out of the Star Fox gang, Wolf O'Donnell is my favorite both in Smash and in amiibo form. Being a later amiibo release, there's kind of an unparalleled level of detail on him. I mean, look at those boots and the belt on his jacket. There's detail everywhere you look here. I also really love the golds, purples, and pinks on this one. It's just a color scheme that really stands out to me. Squirtle has always been one of my absolute favorite Pokemon. It's so neat that he's playable in Smash. As with most of the other Pokemon on this list, this amiibo is a perfect likeness to the character. It has an immaculate paint job and has fantastic detail work on the shell. Not a ton to say here, I just genuinely really love this one. 
The highest rated Pokemon on this list is Ivysaur. I just think he's show-stopping. I love the pose they have this guy in. It shows off his vines and that eye-catching pink flower bud on his back. The face is absolutely perfect. The mix of cool blues, vibrant greens, and that hot pink flower really make this one that stands out from the rest. Plus, he's an absolute tank in Smash, so I have a lot of love for this one. Pac-Man is one they almost physically couldn't mess up due to his simple design, but it still doesn't stop it from being perfect. I love that this is modeled after his original Pac-Man world design and not from the new animated series. His flashy yellow paint and those iconic red boots just make for an incredibly iconic looking amiibo. Who doesn't love Pac-Man? Well, I, I guess Blinky, Inky, Pinky, and Clyde don't. Nana and Popo make for a beautiful amiibo figure. I never really played Ice Climbers, so my only exposure to these two really has been from Super Smash Bros. Either way, this duo is incredibly well crafted and super cute too. Their hammers have a really great wooden texture to them, which just looks fantastic. The contrasting colors from their parkas are lovely, and to top it off, there's some really neat icy crystals on the back of this that just pulls the whole thing together. Lady Palutena from Kid Icarus begins our top 10 Super Smash Bros. amiibo. I remember her being an Amazon exclusive, which was certainly different. Regardless, I think she is one of the more stunning amiibo in this set. First off, that radiant blue halo and her rich green hair color really make this one pop. All of her ornate gold accessories really add a sense of royalty and elegance to her, but on top of that, the blue gem on top of her staff ties in really nicely with that pearlescent blue on the shield. This one just really has it all, a beautifully crafted figure with a ton of neat accessories and a wonderful paint job to boot. Wario farts his way into the top 10. I kind of love that he's based on his WarioWare appearance. It makes this one feel a lot more unique. I do play as Wario a fair amount in Smash, and amiibo-wise, he just looks absolutely fantastic. Wario's face sculpt is perfect, and his proportions really faithfully toe that line between being bulbous and muscular. He has a fair amount of texturing on his pants, and I love that the two little supports aren't colored plastic. As with Nana and Popo, the pinks and blues contrast really well and tie in nicely with that pastel yellow on his helmet and gloves. Young Link is my absolute favorite Zelda figure in this series. I did really miss his inclusion before he was brought back with Smash Ultimate. The Kokiri Sword and Deku Shield look perfect and have great texture and detailing, and he is one of the more accurate faces in this entire line of amiibo. I'm super happy with what we have here. Ocarina of Time will probably always be my favorite Zelda game, and it feels great to have something so reminiscent of that game. Wouldn't it have been really neat though if he had the Razor Sword and a Mirror Shield from Majora's Mask? King DDD has long been one of my absolute favorite Smash Amiibo. Well, for one, I absolutely adore King DDD and love when he's playable in Kirby games. He's just perfect. Amiibo-wise, though, I really love his design here. He looks a little bit more cutesy than normal, and I love the pearlescent white used on his robe. The wooden detail on his massive mallet look great, and it's all tied together with all of those wonderful pastel colors on his robes, hat, and hammer. I also love how you can see the little wrinkles and stitching on his mittens. I know Piranha Plant was a little bonus character that didn't even get its own true reveal trailer, but somehow, someway, this guy has become one of my favorite characters in Smash Ultimate. Realistically, someone like Kamek could have probably been a better choice, but I love everything they've done with the Piranha Plant, and the amiibo is no exception. It sounds silly, but I find this one so visually stunning when paired with all of the other Mario figures. The crisp white polka dots are nice and sharp against that red of the Piranha Plant itself. Those vibrant shades of green on the stem and leaves are lovely, there's even some incredible ceramic texture work and soil inside of the pot he sits in. Piranha Plant was everything I didn't know that I needed in Smash. Our top 5 starts out strongly with the Kremlin King, King K. Rool. To me, he was such a natural fit for Super Smash Bros and someone I voted heavily for in the Smash Ballot. So it was sort of a dream come true to get this guy in a smash, and his moveset was just as wacky and reminiscent of the Donkey Kong Country games as I'd hoped. His amiibo looks absolutely fantastic too. Sculpt-wise, this guy is immaculate. His crocodilian leathery skin is perfectly textured, his strained oversized eye looks fantastic, and that round bulbous golden belly looks great with his golden cuffs and crown. 
The texture and design of his tattered cape look just as incredible. I guess my only other wish for King K would be that he's actually in the next Donkey Kong game. Please? If you might have watched my Persona 3 Reload video, you'll know how much I absolutely adore the Persona series. So Joker being this high won't exactly surprise you. I remember waiting in line for the midnight release of Smash Ultimate and seeing Joker's reveal trailer at the Game Awards. I was in complete awe. I'd occasionally thought it would be neat, but I didn't think he ever had a considerable chance to get into Smash. Well, he is, and we have the amiibo to prove it. No surprises here, he looks absolutely incredible. All the details from this Phantom Thief are perfect. From that iconic mask to his trusty dagger and dark overcoat, they went all out with this one. The blue Persona Flames mask his support stand and just adds such a neat dimension to this character. This one truly stole my heart. Rosalina was one of my favorite new additions in Smash Wii U. Mario Galaxy is one of the best games ever and I just absolutely love her character. She was a Target exclusive upon release and I remember this one being super hard to find. I got incredibly lucky finding her on release day. I just have such a love and nostalgia for this figure, truly when amiibo collecting was at its zenith. I remember feeling so satisfied and proud to own this one and the figure itself looks amazing too. Her icy blue dress is gorgeous with those starry details and the Queen of the Cosmos looks truly perfect with her faithful little Luma at her side. I know I've talked about characters on this list that felt like a pipe dream, but no character felt like more of a long shot than Sora from Kingdom Hearts. From one of my absolute all-time favorite series, it felt as if he would never unlock Disney's red tape to get into Smash. He was the absolute cherry on top of Smash Ultimate. It's only right that he's included amongst all of the other gaming legends, and it just feels surreal to have an amiibo, a Nintendo amiibo of Sora. Nonetheless, he looks fantastic. I do love that they went with the Kingdom Hearts 1 design of Sora. It's just so timeless, though I would be lying if I said I didn't hope that we'd get a Player 2 amiibo of him with his Kingdom Hearts 2 design. This is undoubtedly Sora. No detail was spared here. From his crown keychain on his red pants, to the perfect and ridiculously oversized yellow shoes, to his perfectly captured Kingdom Key, it is a perfect representation of Sora. It would have been a neat touch to have the Mickey keychain on the Keyblade be an actual chain, but I totally get why they didn't go that route. Like the theme, this figure is perfect. Simple and clean. At number one, my favorite Smash Brothers amiibo of all time, Banjo and Kazooie. This was bar none my most wanted character ever. Another one that I spammed the Smash ballot for. After so many years of being completely stagnant, seeing Banjo and Kazooie get their time to shine genuinely brought a few tears to my eyes. It's also the first time we've seen them genuinely realized and modernized in HD without some off-putting blocky art style. Their moveset and design are truly everything I'd hoped they could be, and their amiibo equally so. The bear and bird look genuinely amazing. From the furry detail on Banjo to the lovely gradient paint job on Kazooie's wings, both the sculpt and paint job are absolutely wonderful on this figure. Again, with the Smash Ultimate Amiibo, they got much more crafty at hiding the support stand, this time having Banjo standing upon a golden jiggy which really brings the whole package together. Banjo-Kazooie is one of my top 5 favorite games ever. I can sleep well knowing that even if they're never in another Super Smash Bros game, the Baron Bird made it into Super Smash Bros, and it was truly perfect. Well, that's going to do it for my list, guys. Thank you so much for sticking around if you're still here. What did you guys think? Did you share my love for any of my top amiibo, or did I get it completely wrong? Let me know in the comments below your top 5 least favorite amiibo, and your top five favorite Super Smash Brothers series amiibo. I wanna know who the best of the best truly are. Thank you guys so much again for watching. I know this was probably a longer one, but this is a video I really wanted to do. I love amiibo. 
So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button so you're in the know for the next time I upload. Thank you guys so much again for watching, be good, bye bye.